I realized something last night. Without the vehicle battery attached, the central locking doesn't work. I knew that. And so I've been locking the driver's side door um, with the key. What I hadn't realized was this has no effect on the passenger door. The passenger door's been unlocked for a few days. <laughs> so, let the binman go past. So, I need to work out how to lock it up. You'll need a screwdriver and this hole here. Basically, what I did was put the screwdriver in and then flicked it up like that. And you may have heard a little click. So it goes in that hole, flicks up. And now, The door is locked and the only way to unlock it is to open it from the inside but secure van whilst I wait for the rest of my parts. We do have a couple of batteries. Loads of room. So new day and the sun's back out, so it's a good day to drill the holes for the two new cables to come down from the 260 watt panel. Drill those from the inside out so that I get them in the right place internally. Um, then widen them to six mil, poke the cable down through, um, and then hook it all, uh, well, basically get it all in place to be hooked up. We're not gonna hook it up just yet because um, as soon as you connect those solar panels, that charge that they're getting is going to start coming in and those cables are going to be wider. Those cables are going to be live and uh, we don't need that yet because we're not ready for it. So I want the cable to come in just up here, just up here, and then go down the uh, side of that, uh, side of that piece of wood, carry on down here and come into the cupboard behind the driver's seat. If I if I drill up here outwards, this is actually on the sloping side. I don't want to go there. You can see here. I don't want it to come out here. I want it to come out on the um, nearer where the ladder is, where the blue towel is. I'm actually going to drill one pilot hole down and see where that comes out. Can't see because it's bright. Squeaky bum moment again. Here we go. Let's go see where that came out then. <laughs> kind of happy with that, but miles away from the corner where I was originally planning to go. So what we'll do is we'll put another, um, I'm going to I'm going to drill outwards for the second cable and then when we bring it in we'll just tack it all the way along there. A little bit of a longer run but um, better, for the, better for the roof I think. Um, I'm going to widen those now. Maybe I should have worn goggles. The holes are done. I'm gonna feed these cable ends. Through these. And then through these. And then they go down through the hole. Okay, so we need to get some sicker flex on the bottom here. And <coughs> like I did 
with the solar panel. I'm just going to use my finger to spread it. It seems to work quite well. So this is where the solar panel for the sergeant comes in and what I want to do is just put <coughs> a fuse, uh, well a breaker, a fuse breaker on the, uh, on the positive so that I can isolate it if I want to do anything downstream of it. So I'm going to use one of these, it's a 15 amp breaker, so you take the max current um, on the spec of the panel and multiply it by, I think it's 1.56, but you know, one and a half, 1.6, and then round that up to the nearest um, whole value. So a 15 amp breaker for this um, 130 watt panel should be fine. Um, so I'm gonna cut the cable, um, put this in line, screw it in, and then fasten this all up. And at that point, I can reconnect the panel on the roof and just leave this open um, whilst I'm working on anything else. So I'm going to go and plug in on the roof and then when we flip that switch I'm hoping to see a light on the controller. All connected on the roof, let's see what happens. Hey! Got 13, 13 watts of solar coming in. And for now I'm just going to trip the switch and turn that off because it doesn't need to be on right at the moment. Okay so I'm going to prep the cables for the 260 watt panel that are coming down into the battery compartment, my new battery compartment, but I incorrectly ordered the wrong amp uh, breaker so that's not going to arrive until tomorrow so I can't actually plumb it all in. Never mind. So that's ready to go into the breaker in there. So I'm going to start putting some of the connectors onto the batteries so that we can start getting close to terminating some of these cables onto the batteries. So we want to put longer screws on the top of these. Okay, so this is the cable to come from the solar out of the breaker and onto the battery. This is how the uh, connectors for the battery charger come. Uh, with with Swift, so they have actually been hard connected onto one of these lugs. So I'm gonna have to cut this, re-terminate it onto one of the smaller lugs. My nice super industrial snips have arrived, so we can start cutting the 70 mil cable that runs between the two batteries and also between the inverter and the batteries. So if you want to be able to see how to make your lugs look this good, 
keep watching now because I've got a really, really good tip. Once you've cut the end to the right length, get your lug and measure back from the end where you want to remove the outside, uh, the insulation. Now once you remove the insulation, all of these metal bit, all of the cores are going to go and so that's why you need some cable ties and slowly carefully without cutting your own finger off cut around the cable so that you can remove the outside now this is 70 mil cable because we need it to be able to handle up to 200 amps um, because we're doing a mm, probably about a two meter return trip to the inverter and the inverter is a 2000 watt inverter and the recommended amount to be able to cover is up to 200 amps right so that's that separated now watch what happens can you see now this is already starting to fray out so get your cable tie and close to the end as close to the end as you can whilst leaving a gap get that cable tie on and pull it tight the lug should slot over it does and then you can slide this on and now destroy the cable tie so get cheap cheap cable ties that you don't care about because you're gonna have to cut break break one for every cable that you're terminating which in this setup is one two three four five six seven eight of them and then you can just push it up crimping tool and put this into the crimping tool Ugh. I'm using a brick to keep it steady and what we're going to do is just go round the cable giving it a tap and rotating it slowly until we've got all the way around the cable so that you get a nice even crimp. Hold, the, hold them together, push them together with thumb and finger, two taps and then rotate it two taps, rotate it, excuse me sniffing, I've got a bit of a cold today, I blame James, okay, let's take a look at that, so there we go, that is nice and solid, now I'd probably recommend putting some tape around it just to keep it clear, keep it nice and tidy, let's do that. That, and that is how you terminate lugs on big 70mm multi-core cable. So even though the inverter is going to be physically closer to one of the batteries, it's really important that the cables are equal length. So I've made two cables that are long enough to reach from the back cupboard all the way up to the front battery even though one of them is going to be right next to it. It means that you get even pull on the batteries and you don't get something slightly lopsided or problems. Okay, so I've connected them up to each other and also to the uh, sergeant cables. Um, 
I have gone to I've downloaded the Renergy Bluetooth app and they are showing uh, they've got 36 37 percent charge um, I think the next thing to do is to go and turn the sergeant on and see what happens okay here it goes it's a good sign to start with something started Okay, I uh, just wanted to check if there's anything here to do with power. Ah, so interesting, I can change the solar charging to just do the vehicle. That seems sensible to me. Leisure voltage 13.1. The vehicle isn't connected at the moment, so that's fine. Should we try a light switch? We the lights work. Interestingly, it says that the leisure battery is fully charged. That's a bit concerning. That might be because it doesn't recognise the voltage on lithiums. So, okay. Next thing I want to do is flick the switch on solar. And that should hopefully turn on and as you can see we've got solar coming in the only problem is that the vehicle battery is not connected so I'm going to just disconnect that right I'm going to connect the vehicle battery um, before I do that I'm going to turn everything off turn the sergeant back on let's go to the solar and Flick that switch, and we now have some solar charging on the vehicle. Next thing is to char to plug into mains and charge the batteries. And this is showing that it is charging seems to work okay so it's a new day um, I left the van on charge for a handful of hours yesterday to top the batteries up from 35% to 70 I didn't want to max them off because I'm hoping to connect up the um, solar panel today and I want the solar panel to have something to actually do um, so next thing is to run some 2.5 mil um, 3 core flex cable to go from where the inverter is going to be to where we're going to have our sockets. Um, I am going to use a tool that I've used in the house before which is this thing. Um, it's a cable fisher <laughs> router thing. Um, it's basically a long piece of coiled up metal. Poke it down a hole, unwind it um, and then you can use it to pull cable through. So first thing I want to do is see if I stick it in that hole down there where it comes out the morning light is wandering on my face it didn't seem to want to go very easily the day the time the place I drive around in a city full of shame See whether or not this works. I've drilled a hole through the end of the cable um, and put a cable tie through it, then put a cable tie to connect it to this. So cut all the excess off and hopefully that will keep it nice and narrow. Well that's a grand sum total of absolutely nothing achieved. Um, apart from quite cut wrists from trying to feed my arm up into the top bit so um, I think basically the cable 2.5 mil cable is too thick for 
the existing conduit that's there wasn't going to pull through. The metal thing pulled through as soon as I took the cable off, it pulled through really you know, straight away. So it was definitely just getting stuck on the cable. Um, so we're not going to be putting um, a extension for the inverter at the back of the van. We're going to have to put up with it being right near the front. So let's do that. So that's where the inverter is going to be. And there is cable channel there. So I'm hoping I can route it underneath here, round here, and then have the outlet just here. Oh, flipping it, that doesn't come off either. This is starting to feel like I might be reverting to plan Z. I've got to be honest, I feel a little deflated. I've achieved a, a square root of nothing. I've got 20 metres of cable and I think I'm going to need about two foot of it. Uh, none of the existing cable channels are long enough. Um, I don't want cable to be exposed whilst we're kind of walking around and stuff. So I think the only place that uh, my socket that I was going to install for the um, inverter, the only place is going to be on the side of this cupboard here, on this side, or potentially on that side there. So, yeah, not been a good day. This is where we're at currently. Um, we have got the inverter connected on the negative side. The um, I've run an additional 12 volt circuit here and nothing's connected to it at the moment but um, whilst the seat was out I thought it made sense to put in a fuse box um, on a 8mm cable and get that in place. There's one thing that's not connected and that is the positive side of the inverter and the simple reason is I haven't got a fuse or breaker that I can fit the lugs for the 70mm cable. Um, as you can see here the lug just doesn't fit, um, it's too wide. Um, so I'm investigating an alternative fuse, it's called a mega fuse which is kind of an inline uh, fuse so I've got one of those on order. Um, that's not going to arrive for another week and I'd like the van to be back in a usable position. Now fortunately it is the um, positive side um, which is going to have the fuse on and the positive side will connect to this battery. <laughs> um, so I can put the chair back <coughs> because everything is in place here we don't need to do anything more under the driver's side seat so I'm going to start putting things back together um, and we'll revisit wiring up the inverter in a bit. So there are going to be some things that need cutting down because that doesn't fit anymore. might just watch back some of the videos to remind me how to, <laughs> to get this back in. <clears throat> this is the face of someone who's losing their temper. Having got that front screw in, I cannot get this one in. It goes through the hole and then it just turns. It won't actually screw in. Okay, so it's all working, it's all connected up. Let me show you uh, what's going on. 
So we've got the <coughs> 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter from Renergy mounted on the side here. Um, the negative is going off to the battery under the seat and the positive comes in to this battery. Um, it comes with a remote switch so I'm just about to cut a hole there for that to mount on and then I'm also going to mount a socket there to plug it in. Um, I've given it a test and it works nicely. Um, flick the switch it goes red for a moment and then green and you hear a little click now it's good to go. I'll turn that off for now. <coughs> um, yeah so all working. Very pleased. I'm so chuffed with that because it's been on my mind as a project for so long. Um, I was frankly quite nervous about doing it, but um, I think it looks pretty good. I'd love to tidy up down below the driver's seat, so what I might do at some point is venture into cutting the, um, the grill that was on there, just so at the moment you can see, <clears throat> you can see the cables that come out might box that in, might tidy it up, but really it's um, it's a massive success. So just as a reminder, we had an 80 amp hour lead acid bat battery in there, um, which in reality we could only use half of, so we had 40 amp hours. We've now replaced that with two 100 amp hour lithium batteries, which can be pretty much used 100%. So we've got five times the battery power, um, the engine battery is being constantly topped up during the sun, during the day by the 130 watt solar panel, and the batteries are being charged by the 260 watt solar panel on the front of the van, um, which you know in a sunny peak sunny day will do 20 amps, which is um, you know really great. So can't wait to get away. The inverter gives us options for hair drying and. Um, as you've seen me testing our mini chopper which we use for making sauces and things like that so yeah really 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 chuffed I'm I'm really really pleased so if um, if videos like this are of interest to you uh, and you'd like to see more uh, hit subscribe um, we've got more travel videos um, trips to France trips around the UK coming up and we'll also be going to a special Camp Creator event with, uh, you can have a, a discount uh, if you'd like to come and join us and come and say hi, come and see the setup. Very happy to show you around, talk you through what I've done. Um, details are on the screen now. Um, so you can get a discount, come and see us, come find us. We'll try and put our 2.4 in a van flag up if, uh, if there's space that you can come and dig us out. But come and say hi. Um, so like, subscribe and, Come and say hi to us. Details are on the screen now.